Good evening, everyone. How's everyone doing this evening? Good. Good. First of all, I'd like to say thank you so much for coming to the Hudson Library and Historical Society. I know we have an unnaturally warm, beautiful October evening, and there's probably many other things we would love to do than be in the library, but I think tonight's content about podcasting is going to be well worth it. Um, my name is Kelsey. I'm an emerging technologies librarian here at the Hudson Library, and I do love podcasts. Um, I would, again, I would like to thank everyone for coming here tonight, and I just have a couple of basic housekeeping announcements before I introduce tonight's speaker. Um, October is honestly one of our busiest months in adult programming here at the Hudson Library. I think we only have four days this month that we don't have something going on. So I am very excited that Dave Jackson here is kicking off our month of really exciting programs. Um, and there's a lot of things going on in the month of October. We have Halloween, we have pumpkin festivals, college football, but we are also really excited this Saturday, New York Times bestselling author J.A. Jance will be here. J.A. Jance is quite the entrepreneur herself, like many of you. She used to be a single mother. By day, she sold insurance. Uh, after that, she took care of her children. She was a single mother, and she wrote her books only between the hours of 4 and 6 in the morning. And she eventually worked her way up. She didn't publish her first book until after the age of 40, and she is now the author of over 60 books. And we are so proud that we're going to have her here this Saturday at 1 p.m. So if you feel like stopping back at the library for your chance to hear her life story, her career, and to meet her, um, you won't miss out. So please think about that. Also, this is our first um, Morgan programming that involves new media. Um, what I mean by that is podcasting, video editing, etc. cetera. Um, in 2020, we are planning on opening a creativity lab that supports audio and video creation here at the Hudson Library. And we would love your feedback about other professional development opportunities you would like to learn about. What do I mean by that? Do you want to hear people talk about um, how to talk for video, video editing, um, any other aspect in the media creation? Please let us know. We're going to have evaluations at the end, and your feedback is very important to us. Enough of me, though. Now let me introduce um, tonight's speaker. Tonight I'm introducing Dave Jackson. He is the founder of the School of Podcasting, a top podcast consultant and author of the book More Podcast Money. Dave actually told me this evening that he is going to be uh, re-releasing that book with a new title and updated information later this year. We might have more information for you about that tonight. He has over 14 years of experience in podcasting, and tonight will give us a look into the world of starting our own podcast. And this is perfect whether you're looking to be an entrepreneur and creating a podcast for your company or as a career, or if you're just an amateur. So please give me a warm Hudson welcome for Dave Jackson. Thank you very much. How many people here have ever uploaded a photo to Facebook or attached a file in Word doc or stuff like that? Good. Anybody here ever pressed record on a VCR? Okay, good. Anybody here ever talked before? Congratulations, you have the skills to be a podcaster. A lot of people are like, oh, I don't know about this technology thing. I'm like, no, no, you've actually got, all right, one last thing. Anybody ever been in the car and your jam comes on and you're like, yeah, and you crank it up and then the phone rings and what do you do? You turn down the radio so you can talk on the phone and I go, ha! Ah! You know how to mix audio. So a lot of us you already have the skills for. So. Let's start off here, what is a podcast? We're going to start from ground zero. It can be audio, it can be video, and if you want to be kind of weird, you can actually podcast a PDF, and yes, some companies will actually put their manuals out as a podcast, which is a bit of a head scratcher, but you can do it if you want to. And what I like to do is, uh, what makes a podcast a podcast is it's delivered via this thing called an RSS feed. We don't have to understand what's in it, or what it stands for even, even though we, if we want to get our geek on, really simple syndication. But we're going to kind of go through this and compare it to something we already know. So let's go back to radio, because it's very similar. So here's our DJ. She's got uh, her headphones, got her microphone, she's turning, uh, she's got the turntable going, and she blasts her signal right through a tower, which has a signal. And if you were to look at an actual radio signal, this is kind of what it would look like. And that goes out into, like, here we are in Ohio, right? So we have uh, 100.7, home of the buzzard, right? 
So we, we got that, and if you tune to that frequency, that's what you're going to hear. And it doesn't matter if it's an old uh, radio, a car radio, or for those of us that remember the 80s, a boombox. 100.7, you're going to get home of the buzzard. So far, so good? Okay. Podcasting isn't a whole lot different. The difference is, instead of the DJ, there's now you in your bedroom. And the thing that really stinks about stock photo, stock photo is if this is my client, I'd say, number one, don't get this microphone, and you need to be much closer to the microphone. But it's stock photo. What are you going to do, right? But you're in your bedroom, and you're doing your show, you're recording it your laptop or your computer or whatever you have. And instead of that tower, you now have a media host. Now, I actually work for one. It's called Libsyn. It's short for Liberated Syndication. But that is the thing that blasts your podcast all around the world. When I first started, I lived in the lovely metropolis of Maduro, Ohio. It was me out with the cows. And my first piece of voicemail came from Nuremberg, Germany. And I just about fell out of my chair. I remember I, I saw the attachment, I hit play, and I heard, hello, Dave, this is Michael Van Lowe from Nuremberg, Germany. And I was like, did he just say Germany? Wait, there's some guy on the other side of the planet, and not only did he find my show, but he likes it. It was amazing. So you don't have a tower anymore, you have a media host. And instead of having a signal, you have an RSS feed. And again, we're not gonna really, you don't really need to understand what's going on in that. In my case, my RSS feed is schoolofpodcasting.listen.com slash RSS. And you know what? I never, ever say that out loud. It's all happening behind the scenes in the same way that I don't look at a signal for a radio. I just hit a dial on the bar and it works, right? So that's the thing that's different. And in the same way, I was once driving through, uh, I think it was Arizona, and we hit scan. And there was nothing but, uh, I remember it was classic country. And I'm like, what's classic country? Well, it's bluegrass. And being when I listen to the home of the buzzard, uh, bluegrass was not my favorite channel. But finally, a rock station came in. So what happens when you finally find a rock station or whatever kind of genre you want to listen to? What do you do in that case? Turn it up. Well, you turn it up and then you save it as a preset. It's the same thing with a podcast. You basically, when you uh, submit your show to these different directories, and we'll talk about this, your audience can, you can basically give them a preset so they don't have to go and search for you. It automatically comes up. So in the case of me, instead of telling people, oh, just go to your favorite app and put in school of podcasting.libson.com slash RSS, because that's going to be fun to type on your phone, I can basically, I have presets. And when you click on those, it takes you right to your app where my show is, and you just click on subscribe, and now every time I put out a new piece of content, it automatically is delivered to your phone. So it's not that, whole, whole, not that much difference. The biggest difference is with radio, you're only as strong as your signal. With a podcast, it's global. And it used to be you had to have all, you have to have an FCC license. You don't have to do that. You can do this from, I know people that podcast in their car. I know people that actually podcast while they drive. I don't recommend that. That is the definition of distracted driving in my book. But you can kind of do this from anywhere. And so in the same way you had you know, an old stereo, a car stereo. This is my show in Apple Podcasts. This is my show in Google Podcasts. It's like having different radios, but it's the same song. It's the same information. And then the one thing I want to point out with Apple Podcasts, Apple Podcasts actually has nothing in it. It's just a big mirror of whatever I have in my media host. So we talked about how the radio and the DJ, if you think about it, if the record's stuck and you're hearing a, a song, for those of us who remember when you put the needle on the record and it would get stuck and then it would get and it would get and you you don't reach into the radio to fix that. You have to go back to the source and get the DJ to fix the needle. The same thing, if I have a problem with my podcast, I don't go to iTunes. It's just gonna mirror whatever I have in my media host. And I would go back, let's say I had a typo in the title. I don't fix that at Apple. They're just showing what I put over here in my media host. So I fix my title, and then probably within 24 hours, it would appear in Apple. All right, again, let's stick with what we know. Subscriptions, for those of us who remember, you go down to the magazine store, and you would see, for me, it was uh, Mad Magazine when I was little, uh, maybe uh, Sports Illustrated. And if it was really, really good, if I really, really wanted it, I would subscribe to it, and it would come to my mailbox. 
Everybody remember that for those of us that same thing. Uh, here's my website, and you could go there every week to see if there's anything new, or you can subscribe to my podcast and it will automatically go to your phone. So instead of you going to the store, now the magazine went to your mailbox. Now instead of going to my website, my content automatically goes to your phone or whatever device you're using to consume my podcast. And it used to be, for those of us that if we go way back, they still make these, by the way. I'm like, really? Really? They make a phone book. So you, you get that big, giant phone book that in some cases was so thick it wouldn't fit in the drawer next to the phone. And you would take it and you would get the, the kid's phone number and your favorite pizza place and a couple other places, and you would make your own little phone book. This hasn't changed at all either. Right now, Apple Podcasts has over 700,000 podcasts in their directory. That's a whole lot of podcasts. And so what do you do? Well, I don't want to have to look through this monstrosity. What I do is I take my favorite ones out of those and I subscribe to it, and now it's on my phone. Same theory. I don't want this big, giant database. I just need the ones that I need. I don't need this big, giant database. I just want the ones I want. So it's very similar to stuff we already do. And then what happens, and I'm using Apple here because right now they're about eh, somewhere between 60 and 70% of the market is uh, people listening to podcasts on an iPhone. But you do not, you can listen on Android. Like 80% of Europe is on an Android phone. They're much more flip-flopped in Europe than we are. But I'm just using Apple because they're an easy example. So if I fire up the Apple Podcast app, let's say I, I have a bunch of shows that I have subscribed to. Well, when I fired that app, it says, hey, are there any new episodes in this podcast? And when I, it goes to the next one, any new episodes, any new episodes? And it checks all these different shows that I subscribe to. And if there are new episodes, they automatically download to my phone. And I can set up the app to only do this when I'm on Wi-Fi so it doesn't chew up all my data from my phone. That's a really cool thing. Back then, this came out around 2005. And it used to be before that when and then you remember iPods? And you actually had to plug them in with a cable. So you would take that out, you'd listen to podcasts in your car, and then you would run out of podcasts. And you have to go home and plug it back into the cable. So this was a, a nice revolution when this came about. So what do I need to start a podcast? Any questions before we get past that? Yes? Uh, you spoke of Apple and Android, but then you implied that you could use any operating system? Well, Android, I wouldn't say Linux. I mean, can I podcast on Linux? Yes. Can I paint with peanut butter? Yes. But do you really want to do that? But I mean, like, can I watch it on my Windows phone? Sure. If you have a Windows phone, it's going to be a little harder. Again, that's that's your, your one shade above Linux. Because I have a friend of mine that's a, he's like the diehard, you will pry this Windows phone from my cold dead hands. But I bought a couple apps for it. Yeah. Find yeah, it's possible. It's just, it's going to be harder to find apps and things like that. So, And then somebody else had a question. Um, so do I download Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts from the Apple iTunes store? Yeah, it's actually probably, if you have an iPhone, it's probably already on your phone. Google, God bless them, makes it a little harder. You have to kind of search for the podcast and you say, well, listen to this. Then it adds the app to your Android phone. Or you could use Pocket Cast. It's another really popular software that you can use to find podcasts. What about my laptop? Can I yep. Where would I, how would I get it from? Uh, on a laptop, you could use, we could do it on the web or on a laptop. Many, I, I think Pocket Cast, uh, Overcast is a really popular app on uh, the iOS side that you can just listen on your website. I'm sorry, the other good question, does it cost money to download nope. the Apple Podcast? Nope. Or, or they're all free. Or listen to these podcasts? Nope, they're all free. Okay. There's always a few. Like, uh, one of the ways people make money, there's a, um, political show from some comedians, they make $141,000 a month because they do four shows. They took two of them and put them behind a paywall. And they're like, hey, if you like these two, you can get these other two for five bucks a month and they're just crushing it. So you can, that's, that's by the way, that's not the norm. Everybody's like, ooh, I'm gonna start a podcast tomorrow. But, um, you know, most of the time they're free. Most people use them to market a service, like I use it to market my consulting service. So they're all free. Anybody else? Yes? Does backing up to the Libsyn system, you, you recorded this 
podcast. Mm -hmm. Does it live on your PC, hard drive, whatever, or does it live over at this hosting? Yeah, it lives in the cloud. Basically, it lives okay. that way. Everybody, because it's on your computer, then the people in Germany can't get to it. Right. But if it's in the cloud, and then not only does Libsyn host it, but we also show you how many people listen to it and where did they come from and what app did they use. And then do they have a right to take your words and no. use them? Like if you put a picture on Facebook, Facebook owns it forever. No. Okay. You own it always. You own everything. Okay. So, yes? So you pay a monthly fee just like you would a regular hosting Yep. Yep. I would say we're kind of like Netflix. You, for if you want Libsyn to host your files, you give some monthly fee, and that can be as low as five bucks a month. It kind of depends on how many. The more podcasts you do, the bigger the files, the more it is per month. But every month you get a new bucket, for lack of a better phrase, to add more files to it. So I have, I just put out episode 670, and it's because every month I pay Libsyn 20 bucks, and they give me another 400 megabytes, and I upload more files, and so. When somebody subscribes to my show, you can actually download all 670 episodes. And there are people that do that, which to me is a whole lot of Dave. I'm like, holy cow. But you can do that. All right, so what do I need to get going? I need a microphone. That seems kind of uh, obvious, but OK. I have a website, but best podcasting gear that kind of goes over the best ones. You need some software. Audacity is free, and it works both on a Mac and a uh, PC. And if you wanted to on a, a Linux machine, uh, you need a website if you don't already have one, so you can go to coolerwebsites.com. You need a media host again so you can blast your, your message out there. And then you need an RSS feed, which is already given most media hosts, even if it's not Lips and if it's Blueberry or Podbean or somebody like that, they almost always give you an RSS feed. That's kind of just part of the plan because, again, you need that to create your podcast. And then you need artwork. Uh, that's the only things you need. So if you're doing a solo show, so if it's just you talking to a microphone, talking to your audience, this is it. And we're going to talk about how much it costs, but it doesn't need much to really get going. So why would I podcast? Besides the fact that I want to be rich and famous. Uh, well, number one, you want to connect with people in your field. Uh, the reason I got my job at Lipson is because they knew of me. I've been a customer of theirs for 10 years. My background's in teaching. I taught a lot of Microsoft Office and QuickBooks and things like that. And when I was pulled into the office because I basically got replaced by a phone, because I remember I was in class one day and somebody said, have you ever used those two features together when I did the teacher thing? I said, hey, let's write that on the board. We'll talk about it on lunch. And the kid asked his phone and got an answer. And I went, hey, Siri's going to put me on the job. And so when that job went away, I called Lips and I said, do you guys need any podcast people? And they went, you're available because they listen to my show. So it can kind of get you in contact with the right people in your field. You can build a business. It's a great marketing arm. I have some examples of that a little later. Uh, it works as a great resume builder. I've been hired twice. Uh, I worked for a college for a while. The reason they got me in the door, they said, oh, you know how to podcast? And I go, I do. And then they didn't use any of that knowledge, but that's what got me in the door. Uh, you can be an expert in your field. It does not look like it, but I actually do a weight loss show because I thought if I did a podcast about it, I would actually quit eating ice cream at McDonald's, and apparently that's not working. Uh, but it's funny because I start off the show and I say, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a trainer, I'm just a person like you trying to lose weight in the basement, and I get the most insane questions about, well, my cholesterol is this, and I think my blood count, and I'm like, did you not hear me say, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a trainer, but because I have a podcast, they think I am. Um, you want to generate a following to gain attention of the industry. Like I said, that's, that's kind of work for me. Maybe you just want to entertain people. There are plenty of people that do that. Like comedians do this all the time. They'll start a podcast and they're actually now having, uh, they're playing bigger venues. And what's interesting is they said they can actually start their act in a different place because their audience already knows all the old jokes that they've heard on their podcast kind of interesting. Plus, they can see where my audience is, so that helps when they go to book their shows. Uh, or maybe just want to have a fun new hobby. There are plenty of people that do podcasts about comic books and Batman and NASCAR and golf and whatever else. A lot of uh, religious podcasts as well. If you just want to get the word out and talk to people, I had uh, one of my clients said, look, I just miss the good old days with me and my brother would talk about Formula One racing. So they got together every week 
and they said it was just like the good old days. They really could care less if anybody listened, <coughs> but for them it was fun, and that's what they did. So, when you when, when you want to make a podcast, you have to keep in mind this is your listeners' attention. And I don't know about you. Anybody else got tons of free time? Not, no. Okay. Yeah. Me neither. And so then you have your goal, whatever it is. So let's say you're going to run this for your business. So you have your goal, right? I want to make more money. I want to do more consulting. I want to do whatever it is. And then over here, you know, or, or we could talk about uh, sales funnels and things like that, all this business stuff. Well, they don't want to hear that. And then over here, they're talking French toast recipes and cat videos and what. You don't want to talk about that because that's not going to help you get to your goal. You have to find the area in the middle where it will hold your audience's attention, but also put you towards your goal. That's the part that's kind of tough. But that's really, if you're doing this as a business or a marketing arm, that's going to be this. Because if you do too much of this, they're bored. If you do too much of this, you're spending a lot of time making a podcast that is not having any kind of results that you want. So, uh, is anybody listening? You can see, going back, you know, podcasting started in 2004. But over the years, it's done nothing but go up. And the only reason it went down here in uh, 2013 is they redefined what was a podcast. But this year, we're excited because we went over 51%, which is uh, 144 million people now have listened to at least one podcast. And if we get to weekly, that's 62 million. It's kind of weird because we're like, oh, it's only 22%. That's, that's 62 million people. I think I can find somebody out of 62 million to listen to my show. And we've already overtaken satellite radio in the car. Mainly because, and the, the biggest reason for that is radio is awful. I don't know about you, my favorite, anybody here listen to Mike Trevisano on uh, 1100? The thing that always drives me nuts about that, they do commercials for Mike Trevisano on the Mike Trevisano show, to which I'm screaming at my dashboard, I'm already listening. Why are you wasting two minutes trying to get me to listen to the show? I'm already listening. Radio's pretty awful. Uh, 93% of people, anybody want to guess what I'm going to say up here? Anybody know? Listen to it in the car and then uh, I'll give you a hint. How many people are in the car? One. Yeah, a lot of people listen alone. So they need somebody to keep them company. And they're tired of listening to Binky and Wiz in the morning with traffic and weather on the tens. And I was like, oh, geez, I know what the weather is. I can put my arm out the window. Uh, so what kind of equipment? And I usually say you can get going for about the price of an Xbox. So this is a uh, Samsung Q2U. It comes with this cool little boom arm that you can clamp on your desk and when it's time to podcast, you pull it down and when you're done, you pull it back. It comes with some headphones. This is called a pop screen, which you definitely need. So when you, if everyone puts their hand in front of their mouth and say, happy peanut butter, just go ahead and do that. Happy Feel all that wind come out of your mouth? When you do that into a microphone, it sounds really, really bad. So you need one of those things between you and your microphone. And I usually tell people, try to get about three fingers away from the microphone. And if you'll notice it, I'm pointing at the corner of my mouth, because if I do this and say, happy peanut butter, well, they've, got good, they've got good windscreen on this one, so that's good. But a lot of times you'll end up with what we call popping peas. So anybody want to guess what all this equipment costs if you were to buy it? $300, $200, anybody else? I'm sorry, you've all overbid. It's 69 bucks. So a lot of people are like, really? I'm like, yeah, really. And it's actually, I have this microphone, and I have a, a professional one you can find in a radio studio. It costs about 300 bucks. There is not $230 difference between the microphones. They're really pretty good these days. Uh, now, this would be, I talked about flying solo, where all I would need is the microphone. If I had somebody in the room with me, I would want to plug two microphones in and have it go into my computer. And that's where you get into devices like that, the little USB interface. And that's why I usually say it costs about the price of an Xbox, because that thing's about 120 bucks. So you look at $70 for the microphone, then you need artwork, and that's the next thing. Yeah, so you need software. Uh, like I said, Audacity. If you're also on a Mac, there's GarageBand. GarageBand is really, really pretty because it's made by Apple. But the other thing is, it's not my favorite for editing. There are a lot more clicks involved to to do basic editing in, in GarageBand. Now, if you already know GarageBand, no need to go through another learning curve. But I always say, if you're looking for free software, I would start with Audacity. It's not as pretty, but I know people make a living using it. Uh, I use a program called Hindenburg Journalist. 
I actually asked them, I said, um, why did you name your company Hindenburg? And it's because that guy, the, oh, the humanity, oh, that guy, you know, you've heard that recording. That was apparently the first portable recording of a live event or something like that. I'm like, and still, though, why did you name your company? But um, it works on a Mac or a PC. It's $99. Uh, the Cadillac of, of audio is uh, Adobe Audition, and it's kind of different because you don't buy it. This is a one-time fee. This you basically rent it 20 bucks a month, uh, and it does everything. And I think next year they're coming up with a new version that will actually do your laundry. I mean, it really does everything. Uh, hosting, we talked about this a little bit. There's website hosting, and a lot of people will see this. Let's say you're using Bluehost or HostGator or any other GoDaddy, things like that. And it says, hey, look, uh, unlimited websites and unlimited, or in this case, unmetered bandwidth. So I just upload a bunch of files there. It says right here, unlimited. That's for a website. And if you think about it, a website is text and some pictures. So an actual web page itself is really, really tiny in file size. So transferring a, a web page from the internet down to your computer takes like very little room. But now you've gone from, I'm not serving you know, text and pictures, I'm now serving a 40 or 50 megabyte file. That's a whole different story. And it's not a case that a web host can't handle it uh, because of the, the storage or the bandwidth. It's because now when you post your file, and you've got 300 people that are dying for your new podcast to come out, and they all grab it at the same time, that poor little computer is going, ah, ah, ah. it can't keep up. So that's why a web host does not work as a media host. And that's where you need, basically, like I said, Lipson, Blueberry, Podbean, things like these. These are people that are designed. So I guess it was at least three years ago, President Obama was interviewed on Mark Barron's podcast in his garage. Like the President of the United States went to a guy's garage to be interviewed. He had uh, close to 900, or I'm sorry, um, yeah, 900,000 downloads in one day. And they didn't break a sweat. So where if that was a website, it would have crashed and died. So don't try to use, like I just said earlier, you don't want to paint with peanut butter. You don't want to use a web host for a media host. Uh, this is what you'll see. You'll see how many people downloaded your show. So this is, some of the stuff that I've done. You can see I've got a couple thousand people listening to my episodes. And that's about a podcast about podcasting. It's not like weight loss where everybody needs it. This is a very uh, niche kind of thing. I can see where they came from. Where's my audience located at? Uh, so apparently doing well in the UK. And then I can see what apps they use. So Apple, Apple likes to keep things nice and confusing. So there's Apple Core Media and iTunes. And there's another one called iTunes Store. They're all Apple. And it depends on what device you're on. If it's if it's on a phone, it'll say a podcast. If it's on a tablet, it'll say, I think, uh, iTunes. And Apple Core Media, I think, is on Safari or something. It's just weird. But you can see how many downloads you got, where they came from, and what app they're using. And then last one you need to start is artwork. Um, these are the specs. If you don't know, if you're like, I don't know what that means, that's why you go hire somebody. Uh, but it's really not. It's basically just a big square. And this is one of my shows called Because of My Podcast, where I basically have people saying, like, look, I got to hang out with Alice Cooper for a night. I'm like, that's cool. Because somebody heard somebody that, you know, heard his podcast. Uh, there's a woman named Mignon Fogarty who goes by the name of Grammar Girl that actually got to go on Oprah because of her podcast. And so if you don't want to make your own, it's somewhere around $60. It depends on who you use. You can actually do it for yourself. There's a great program called Canva, C-A-N-V-A.com, or if you go to spark.adobe.com, uh, those are two free software. And you can actually make, I'm not a graphic artist by any means, but I can make some stuff that looks a little better than crayon, like, for, for that. And those are free. Um, the other ones I mentioned, the $60 one, there's a, a company called Kappa99 that I think it's 50 bucks. There's another company called podcastdesigns.com that is around $80. But the thing is, that's a one-time fee. You just need it once. Don't need it every week. So, so far, so good questions on any of that? Yes?
Yes. You don't, actually. Um, there, there are some on there, but it's because they're part of the network. But typically, satellite radio is kind of like, it's like saying, how do I get uh, a podcast on FM? They're two different kind of mediums. Um, Sirius is starting to get into it because Sirius bought Pandora, or vice versa. Yeah. And Pandora now has podcasts. They're very, 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 very picky on who they put on their platform, but the school of podcasting is on Pandora, so. Yes, any other questions? Yes? How do you generate those reports on how many downloads, and how reliable are they? I mean, are a substantial percentage of those just bots downloading it? Great question. Uh, Libsyn is IAB certified, which means basically we spend a lot of money uh, weeding out bots. Um, we also, Apple Podcasts, if you don't listen to any of the last five episodes, we'll just quit downloading them. They're like, okay, you're not interested. So that doesn't happen with magazines, it doesn't happen with newspapers, it doesn't happen with the radio, but with podcasting, if you're not listening, they quit downloading it. So it's pretty accurate. Now, are there gonna be those people that download it and never listen to it? Sure, but are there people that get the newspaper and never read it? Sure. It's kind of weird because newspaper and radio magazines are trying to hold podcasting to this new standard because they're scared, and that's why. But they're actually, you already get better statistics in podcasting than you do in any other medium except for Facebook because Facebook knows what you have for breakfast and has much more scary information than that. Yes? You mentioned having a website and using a host like mm -hmm. What does the website do then? Ah. If you're not going to be able to function, make it downloadable, but you, is it a domain name you're talking about? It's a domain name. So when I, because I could use Libsyn as my website if I wanted to. If I just want people to subscribe and listen to my show, I'm not doing any kind of fun split testing. I'm not trying to get people to sign up for a newsletter so I can sell them something. And you can even point your domain at Libsyn if you just want a very basic site. Um, but a website, what it basically does, because you're going to type up let's say a paragraph and a half about what's in the episode, and that attracts your good friend Google. So now Google, you come up in a search, and people go, oh wow, cool, There's this sounds cool. They click play, and now they sit there and listen to it on their website. And Google goes, that's funny. Every time somebody goes to that website, they stay there for a while. Now that must be really good information. Let's bump them up the charts in the search results. In fact, right now, Google is now indexing podcast episodes. Like you actually might see an episode where you can just click play in the search results. So that's what having your own website does. So yes. Question over here. Um, if you already have your graphics mm -hmm. and you go to Lipset, you can just download it. Uh, is that the part of the process yep. that you buy into? It's just got to be 1400 by 1400, all the way up to 3000 by 3000, and then the file size, not the dimensions, the file size has to be less than 500 kilobytes. And one last question. Sure. Other than Lipstick, are there other two, maybe, can you name two sure. more? Sure. Uh, Blueberry, which is because E's are evil for some reason, B-L-U-B-R-R-Y dot com. Uh, Podbean is another one. Uh, use the coupon code SOP, short for School of Podcasting, SOP free on any one of those, and you'll get a free month. Okay. And just as a recommendation, you were uh, mentioning the... Uh, um, like Audacity, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm surprised nobody knows of this because I've been using this software oh. forever. Started off free. Wavepad. Wavepad. Wave there's there's yeah. Reaper. Yeah. There's a ton of them. Yeah. Um, it's really good though. It's yep. And I can tell if you already know one, yeah. then keep using it because yeah. there's there's it's kind of like going for those of us that remember Word Perfect. I'm really dating myself. There was Word Perfect and then there was Word. They're kind of the same thing with a different name. So a lot of these audio programs are the same thing. Yes? One more question about equipment. If mm -hmm. you have equipment like a mixer and a microphone set yep. up for recording or playing live music, any reason you can't come out of the back of that mixer and go into the... That's what I did. Okay, so I you started don't have off. to buy a special magical podcast Ooh. to make you smart all of Now, I'm a, I'm a musician, so when I started, I was in the basement of my brother's house next to the water heater, and I ah. plugged this SM58 into a mixer and the mixer into my computer. So, and then pray that nobody flushed the toilet. 
That's the, the joy of podcasting from home. <laughs> yes, exactly. All right, so what if I want to use this for my business? Good, we're doing good on time. Um, you have to stand out. So this is Cleveland Brown Stadium, previously known as the Factory of Sadness, and uh, <laughs> um, holds 73,200. And they say that roughly for every uh, almost 2,000, I think it's 1,900 blogs, there is one podcast. So for every 1,900 blogs, there's one podcast. So if somebody at, at Cleveland Brown Stadium said, can we have all the podcasters down on the field, there'd be 37 people. Which one is easier to be found in? So that's a big reason why you want to start. Uh, so how do I do a podcast for my business? If you have those questions and you're like, oh, if somebody asked me that again. So for me, and I don't mind answering this, what's the best microphone for under 100 bucks? That's an episode. Why? Because everybody's asking that. Everybody's typing that into Google, and so it comes up. And also, then if you get that email, you can say, oh, it's the Samsung Q2U, it's about 60 bucks. I talk about this in my podcast, and then you can send them the link to where they can go listen to it, and then all the other questions that they have, they get answered automatically. So now they come back and you have a better educated customer who already knows you, likes you, and trusts you. I had somebody once, they drove from Minnesota to Atlanta, and they called, I have a phone number on my website that I occasionally will actually answer. And I said, hey, this is Dave. And he goes, like, Dave, Dave? And I go, yeah. And he goes, wow, okay, uh, wow, I, I thought he'd get voicemail. And he goes, um, I just wanted to know, I'm driving from uh, Minnesota down to Atlanta, and I've been listening to you for like the past six hours, and you are my man. I don't know why I'm going to podcast about, but like, I'm starting with you, buddy. And I'm like, great, any questions I can answer for? And he goes, no, like, you answered your phone. And I go, yeah, I, I do that on occasion. So. It, you, you build that relationship with people while you sleep. Um, industry news. I, there's a friend of mine that does, he, he's into Celtic music, like with mandolins and stuff, and he talks about all the different events and everything going on in the Celtic music scene. Why? Because when he knows about the new Celtic music event, he goes, oh, by the way, can I play there? Like, what a great, brilliant move. Um, helpful advice. That's what I basically do a lot of. Uh, why? Because then people know, like, and trust you. So they want to say, hey, I've got a new book out. Hey, I've got this new service out. They go, that guy seems good. He seems awfully helpful. Uh, interviews. Interviews, uh, a lot of people think I either have to do interviews or I have to do a solo show, to which I say you can do both. When you do a solo show and you just talk to your audience and talk to one person, I always pretend I talk to somebody across the table. Don't do the, the radio thing where I go, hey, you guys, hey, everybody because people are listening with earbuds, they're in the car alone, they're like, who's he, who's he talking to? So talk to one person. Now you build your influence, because you get to flex your muscles and show how smart you are, and you build that relationship with your audience. When you do interviews, now you build your network. So now you have people that can help promote you, and now the other one doing solo shows, you build your influence. So it doesn't have to be that. This is Gary Leland. He owns a sporting goods store, and so, yes? Um, so could I limit the geographic area of uh, who hears my podcast? No. You can't. No. You, you mm, maybe, but the answer is more like, why? Because if it's really hyper-local, like I have a friend of mine that's just making a killing doing a show about New Orleans, yeah. and if I'm, I'm going to listen to that. I don't live in New Orleans. I'm not planning to go to New Orleans anytime, or New Orleans, however they say that. So. Um, if well, it's hyper-local, they're not going to listen. The reason why I would be interested, I'm a lawyer. I have mm -hmm. a license to practice in Ohio. Ah. And I practice in Northeast Ohio. Sure. So it's not practical for me to, I don't care if anybody in the state of Washington yeah. hears it. You know, I can't represent them. Right. Well, you can just state that up front okay. at the beginning. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in. Just so you know, I'm in Ohio. If you're not in Ohio, I can't help you. And most people will just, okay, well, then I'm out of here. Yes? Well, I've worked and had people correspond from New York. They, you obviously are better, like an engineer that would work in Cleveland but also have an office in Atlanta, he get hired here. Sometimes being outside of your market and having people recognize you makes the locals think you're a bigger deal than you are. That's why I, I, when I started my right. business, I'm talking about the blue, blue note record. Everybody assumed it was blue note I have a friend of mine that's a coroner. 
and now make six figures teaching other people how to be corners because some states don't have the budget and they your, your corners have to get certified every year and yet they only hold courses this is our government in action every other year you have to be certified every year I'm like really so what did he do he jumped into his niche found out what they needed and made a course that would then get approved by everybody and people come to him down to get training so it's one of those things that can, you know, there's always going to be that weird area of like, hmm, and then you just got to kind of, it's, and even if I did a show for people in Ohio, I would still say, hey, just for the record, this is not legal advice. You always got to do the old CYA. But Gary does a sporting goods show, and I don't know why he picked this niche, but he is the king of women's fast pitch softball. Like, he has the entire Olympic team on speed dial, and I'm not making that up. He used to spend $120,000 a year on Google ads for his sporting goods show. He starts a podcast, uh, and then when it comes to it, now a word from our sponsor, it's him. He sponsors his own show. And now he doesn't do any Google ads, and that $120,000 goes right in his back pocket. Uh, he's out in Dallas. Uh, they actually had a Gary Leland day in Dallas, because he's just beloved in the women's fast pitch softball. So he's a very big fish in a very tiny pond, but he says he makes all these coupons and things like that. The only way people will hear these is if they listen to his podcast. And he goes, they're just, it's very easy to prove that this is generating business. Um, here's an example of another podcast, Trader Joe's. Uh, despite its popularity, they are getting 335,000 downloads within the first 30 days. And Trader Joe's, they had an episode where they talked about, you know, if you're not familiar with Trader Joe's, it's all about organic food and saving the planet and that whole nine yards. And they actually had an episode where they explained how they were going to swap out the refrigeration section for a new type of refrigeration that was much more efficient. And to me, I hear that and go, mm -hmm, I can't wait to hear the next episode. But the people that love Trader Joe's are like, oh my gosh, did you hear what they did? This is great! Because that's what those people are super passionate about. Um, this is John Deere. John Deere did a show. First of all, they've been doing a magazine for 124 years, so marketing from John Deere is, is nothing new. They've been doing this. They just took a magazine and turned it into a podcast. Now, is it all about tractors? No, because nobody tunes into an infomercial on purpose. Right? It's just it's Saturday night, it's 2 o'clock, you don't know what you're doing up, and oh my gosh, sham wow again? Right? Nobody tunes into that on purpose. But uh, they're already getting 5,000 downloads per episode. And what they talked about are things like depression and the fact that there is a problem now with suicide in the farming industry because they're all getting squeezed and they don't know what to do. And why would John Deere talk about this? Because they want healthy farmers. Why? Because what do healthy farmers do? They buy tractors. Exactly. So it doesn't have to be a big infomercial. They talk about things in, the, in their industry. Uh, I remember Whirlpool used to have a podcast and they talked about, I remember they gave tips on like how to get your kids to brush their teeth longer and things like that. Why? Because families have lots of laundry. So it's just helpful hints and they would keep their brain in front of people. Uh, the bottom line is you have to deliver value. A lot of people think a podcast is a conversation. And I could fire two microphones and we could have a conversation, but in the end you have to figure out again, if we go back to that original screen, here's my audience, what do they want to hear, why am I starting this podcast? Those are the two big ones. Who am I talking to and why am I doing this? So for me, I answer a lot of questions. It gives me a chance to flex my muscles and go, look at me, I know podcasting. And it's answering the questions that my audience wants to hear. I give stories about people that are doing successful things with their podcast that inspires them to want to start a podcast. And it's, it's all about value and it's not, it can't just be about you. But I hear so many people that just start a podcast and my favorite was somebody started a podcast and was like, hey, uh, are we going to talk about the thing in the Times? And the other person goes, I thought we were doing the one with the review. I don't know what you want to do. I don't know. I thought, well, what do you want to do? And I was like, this is a great conversation to have, uh, but before you press record, not after record. So there are a lot of people out there that are like, that is not value. Um, what, you have to ask yourself, what am, I going, what am I going to deliver to my audience that's going to inspire them to tell a friend because 70% of the way that your audience is going to grow is from people going, did you hear what they said on such and such? Uh, Joe Rogan is a guy, 
He's been a comedian for 10 years. He used to host Fear Factor. He was on uh, news radio on NBC. He's been in entertainment for 10 years, and he had Elon Musk on the show. And Elon Musk smoked pot on the microphone, and the world went crazy. And his stock went down because, oh my gosh, this guy smoked a pot. But that's one of those things. What inspired people to talk about a show? Well, have your guests smoke pot, apparently. We'll get a lot of downloads. It was kind of weird, but those are the things that uh, when I did an episode once about a guy, he had an idea. He said, why don't I go to your, let's, he, in his case, he's all about horses. So he went to the top horsing event and said, I would like to have a booth at your show. I will interview all of your vendors. I will interview all of your speakers. And all I need is a booth. And the, the place went, wait, we're going to get a ton of extra exposure? Because you have horse people? And he went, yep. So I did. And he interviewed all the vendors that were there. And they went, wait. You do a podcast for horse people? And he went, uh huh. And they go, um, how much is it to sponsor your show? I'm oh like, that's brilliant. Then he interviewed all the speakers, thus growing his network. So now he had all these people that were promoting the fact that they were on his show. That's brilliant. Oh, yeah, and it's the biggest horse industry place. He's got his target audience right in front of him. So when that guy came on my show, people were like, oh my gosh, I can't, that's such a great idea. And that got shared all over the place. It inspired my audience to go, have you heard of this idea? So that's the kind of stuff you want. How long should my podcast be? A better question is, how long can you hold their attention? That's really what it boils down to. This is a really good book. Uh, Valerie Geller is a tried, true radio guru, and she has one of my favorite quotes. Uh, there is no such thing as too long, only too boring. So I did a, an episode. Normally my episodes are around 40 minutes. And I did a show a while back that was about an hour and 10. So it was about 20 minutes longer than usual. But I dumped everything out of my head about how to do an interview and how to be interviewed. And I didn't have a single complaint. I got people go, that was like the best episode ever. Nobody noticed that it was 20 minutes longer than usual because of the stuff that my audience asked me all, all the time. All those frequently asked questions, I threw them all into one episode and put it out there. Uh, how often should I podcast? Uh, if you're just trying to keep your brand in front of people, then, you know, maybe two shows a week that are super short. Um, if you're trying to educate people, maybe one show a week. The, the Busy Mom podcast should not be 20 minutes long, because what busy mom has 20 minutes to listen to the podcast? But I, I used to listen to a show, I cannot remember for the life of me the name of the show, but I remember the brand, and it was the uh, Organization of Christian Athletes, and they would do like this two minute Hey, did you know that eating carrots will blah, 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 blah. Thanks so much. Brought to you by the Association of Christian Athletes. And it was just these little things to keep your brain in front of you. Uh, there are no rules. Uh, Joe Rogan, I just mentioned him. This guy breaks every rule in the book. He doesn't publish on a regular basis. His podcasts are hours long. There's a show called uh, Dan Carlin's Hardcore History. He comes out about every other, other month. His last episode was six hours long and it got over a million downloads on the first day. Because when people are just die hard about that particular podcast. Um, I always tell people, record some episodes and then decide. Because some people are like, I'm going to do a daily show. And in my head, I'm going, no, you're not. Uh, but record a couple, and then you go, ooh, this, this took a little longer than I thought. Then pick your schedule. You don't have to have a set schedule, but it really helps. Because I have people that tell me, Dave, you're with me on the way to the feed store every Monday. Because I release every Monday morning. And I had one person say, you're, you're in the shower with me every Monday. And I go, that's, that's a little weird. OK. But if you can be a regular schedule, it does help. Yes? That raises a question for me. If you make a podcast and you decide three months later, you really don't want anyone else to listen to it, can you pull them down? Yes. The internet does write in ink. Keep that in mind that somebody's going to have a copy on their phone somewhere. But yeah, I've had a, I've started over the 14 years, probably 30 different shows. I did one show about customer service because that's what I did at my job. And then I realized that was my job and not my hobby. And I did about seven episodes and I just sounded like a grumpy old man. I was like, I went to this store today. <laughs> Who wants to listen to that? So I stopped and I pulled off the line. So yeah, and it doesn't have to go on and on and on. There are shows where people will go, hey, this is one of 13 episodes. We're going to examine such and such. And you just do a deep dive on this subject, and there it is, brought to you by so-and-so, and off you go. Uh, podcast math. Uh, the value in an episode multiplied by smart promotion. So the old Kevin Costner, if you build it, they will come. That is so not true. You have to tell people 
that we have a podcast. But that is equal to the total number of downloads. So if there's no value, well, you can tell everybody in the world, and it won't work. Anybody remember, this is, again, probably 15 years from now, anybody remember when Johnny Depp was in a movie about the Lone Ranger? It was a horrible movie, but I mean, they had the Happy Meal and the dolls and everything like that. Horrible movie. No value, tons of promotion, ick, right? But if you have a great podcast and no promotion, it will grow and it's going to be slow. So you got to have both those together. Uh, is it worth podcasting? This is a guy named Ryan. Ryan sent me an email once. This is weird because I'm going to call him again this year. But he said, hey, Dave, I just want to let you know, I, uh, I, I wanted to write to you because my best friend of 25 years uh, was killed suddenly. Um, I lost my job of 20 years, and I'm pretty sure I had cancer. And my favorite day of the year is Halloween. So I decided on Halloween of 2017, I was going to take my gun and blow my brains out. But I found your podcast, and you said sometimes having a podcast can kind of give you a purpose. And I thought, well, let's try this podcasting thing first. And he goes, I want to let you know I love it. I've built my own community now, and I don't want to kill myself. He goes, obviously, I have some things i got to work through. He goes, but I just want to let you know you saved my life. And that, I, it's hard to make me speechless. But I was just like, it's just me next to the water here in the basement. I'm not trying to save anybody's life. The great thing about it was he put his phone number in his signature. So on Halloween, I called him. And I'm like, hey, is this Ryan? And he's like, yeah. And I go, this is Dave Jackson. He goes, get out of here. And I go, no, seriously, it's Dave Jackson. He goes, really? And I go, yeah, man. It's just making sure you're still on the planet, man. I need all the listeners I can get. Come on. <laughs> and so we're actually good friends now. Uh, but that is something I never planned on ever happening was somebody saying, and what's weird is I'm not the only one. I know a friend of mine that does a show called Speak Life Church. He's helped probably five people and a guy last week. The same thing that it's, you don't, it's like a side effect that you are becoming friends. You're building this relationship with people all over the world and you're like their bestest buddy now when they get your phone. So with that, I'll open up the floor. Any other questions on anything? Yes? No. Great question. Uh, that's the easiest way. But I do a show with a guy in um, Nebraska, and there's a great program called Squadcast that allows, we basically connect online. I have my little microphone, he has his microphone, we connect. And what's great about it is it records both of us separately, and I can take both those files and then put them into Audacity or whatever you're using and put them together. And what's great about that is that way when his dog starts barking, I can mute just him. Whereas if we're on the same channel, it'd be kind of a, a messy situation. But yeah, Squadcast is a great way to do that. There's also Skype. I mean, there's, it's one of those things where there's so many different ways to record. But that's my favorite one. We'll, get, we'll go here and we'll come here. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. How does it get into Apple and all these places? You have to do it once. And what you do is you take this, that ugly thing I had, the school podcasting.libson.com, your RSS feed, you copy that, you go to Apple and say, hey, validate this, and they go, yeah, looks good, and you say submit that. And it takes mm, somewhere between two days to two weeks, and they will approve it, and then from there on out, it's like they're a radio, and they've tuned to your station, and now when you put out a new episode, it just updates. And you do that once for Apple, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify, doesn't cost you a thing. Amazing. Uh, yes? We're doing the same thing. Spotify or SoundCloud does our online podcast. Yeah, stay away from SoundCloud. SoundCloud is a, and I'm not, everybody goes, oh, you're going to say that because you work for Lipson. Uh, I'll just say this. Uh, Apple came out with special coding in 2017. Spotify hasn't put it into place yet. They're just, they're, they're a music service that dabbles poorly in podcasting. Same way Squarespace, beautiful websites, horrible podcasting services. So stick with somebody, who, you know, whether it's Blueberry or Podbean or Lipson or whoever. Um, but SoundCloud is a really bad choice for your podcast. We can actually take your audio, turn it into video, which would just have a static image, and put it on YouTube for you. But there's no direct tie because YouTube is actually on their own server and we're on our own server. But uh, what did 
Kelsey is passing out is a survey that uh, if you would like to let me know how I did, uh, that would be great. And uh, how are we doing on the time? We've got five minutes. We've got a couple more questions. Is that okay, Kelsey? Yeah. No we'll start with you. In some cases, I have a sponsor on the School of Podcasting. That little red box that you saw, I met him at an event, and he goes, I want to, like, will you talk about my product on your show? And I went, well, that fits really good. I've had other products that don't, and I say no. Um, but, yeah, you can get them on your own. There are, you'll hear some people like, you make money from day one. Uh, and what that is, uh, it's a type of ad called dynamic ad insertion to get our geek on, which means you upload your file, and it'll either put one at the very beginning or the very end. And in some cases, you can actually go in and say, put one right here. The bad news is, I always call this, this is almost like, um, like podcast welfare. You make point zero zero. The last time I checked, point zero zero was point zero zero one seven cents per download. So if you got 300 downloads, you make like 31 cents. So don't fall for that whole, like, we can make money from day one, and then they show these people that, you know, are getting 20,000 downloads an episode. Well, that's after years and years of building your audience. You're not gonna get that out of the gate. Uh, the average right now is around 2,000, and then the reason for that, now, first of all, this, I mean, this is what, close to 100 people? 2,000 people is a lot of people that in the age of satellite radio, AM, FM, Xbox, all the stuff they can listen to, there, there's no spam in podcasts. You want to listen to my show you just swipe right and say delete so those are people that are choosing to listen to you and the fact that like there's a guy that does a chameleon breeding podcast it's an actual thing he sells cages and his audience has said you know we can buy these from china cheaper but we're going to buy your cage because this thing called the law of reciprocity because you've done nice things for us we're going to do nice things for you and he said, yeah, I'm actually gonna cut back on doing my podcast because I can't keep up with the demand. And I said, no, 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 you get a new manufacturer. I go, if you double down, this is working, don't cut back. So uh, a lot, the, the easiest way, the best way, best in quotation marks, to make money is to promote your own product because you're making that relationship with your audience. They know like and trust you. Oh, by the way, here's my product. Yes? I do. I'm, I'm doing more of that. I'm actually taking a class right now in YouTube. Uh, I do a thing on Saturday morning where I do a live streaming thing. I just put that on YouTube. Uh, but like tomorrow, I'm doing a um, video on how one of my websites got hacked and it's gone forever. And how I thought I had a backup and I thought my uh, media host had a backup and they had a backup and it didn't work. And it's just kind of like, hey, don't do this kind of thing. So I'm always trying to help, throw out helpful hints or did you know this? And those frequently asked questions kind of things. And they're usually pretty short. Yes? Speaking of that, can you produce for dual purposes? In other words, oh, yeah. Like you do a YouTube yep. video. Yeah, I do a uh, lot. Can you podcast that also? Yeah, I, uh, I, I do a show on Saturday morning. It's live called Ask the Podcast Coach, where people come in and ask questions via chat uh, thing, via YouTube, as a little chat window. So at, answering your questions there, again, showing off the look at me, I know what I'm talking about. And people then hire me later. Uh, and I, did, I actually do 60 minutes uh, of that I take and put out as an audio podcast. And I just make very sure when I'm doing something visual, not to say, hey, in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see this, because that's not gonna make any sense to the audio people. But you can just pull the audio right out of that and do that. And then I do an extra 30 minutes, and there's a service called Patreon uh, that I put that behind. And if you want the extra 30 minutes, you have to sign up for that, and it goes from anywhere from a dollar a month to, uh, I have one person paying me $125 a month and then they get bonus consulting. So you're all sorts of little bells and whistles you can offer. So, how long can I keep going? As long as people want to stay. Okay, because I'll stay here all night and answer these questions. Uh, yes? My course is $49 a month or $500 a year. And I would do a giant commercial now that I'm not. So that's always tacky. Um, yes? So a podcast, you can schedule when you want it here. Yep. In other words, how does that process work? You can make, sit down at 2 or 3 and then say, okay, every Monday. Yeah, there's a, there's a friend of mine, his name is Johnny Dumas. He does a daily show. 
And what he does is records eight interviews on one day. He has got a military background and he just pounds them out. And then he schedules them. I had a friend of mine that moved from Chicago to LA and he did a music show. And he just recorded a bunch and then said, this one goes out next week, this one goes out next week, this one goes out for that and that. And then as he's driving across the country, this podcast will be released. So that's yeah. How do you solicit for sponsors for your show? Uh, the biggest thing is, do you have a product that you love? So like, I love Focusrite stuff, so they're a perfect fit. And then you go, hey, you know, you're trying to reach people that want to use audio equipment. I have a whole bunch of them over here. How about you pay me a hundred bucks an episode? So do you call that company's uh, yep. marketing department? Or yep. who do you call? Okay. The marketing department, because if you call the sales department, they're gonna try to sell you one. Very good. Uh, the, one of the, a great tip is if there's a magazine um, in your industry, go to the back with the small ads and call, or first of all, call the magazine and go, how much is it for one of those small ads in the back of the magazine? And they go, oh, it's, uh, you know, whatever, 90 bucks, great. Then call those people that have the small ads in the back and say, hey, by the way, I have your target audience over here and you can advertise on my show, it's only $75 an episode. Because those people have a budget. So, but you know, and then you just keep asking. Not everybody's, some people are gonna go, a pod what? You're gonna run into those people. Yes? So I'm a little confused. So if I start my, I do my very first podcast. Mm -hmm. How does anyone find it? Listen to it. Uh, here's how you grow your audience. And people hate the fact that I boil it down, but it really boils down to this. Because number one, putting on a website, how many people are in the phone book? I'm in the phone book. You know the yellow thing we're talking about? How many people are famous because they're in the, I'm not famous because I'm in the phone book. So being an Apple podcast is not gonna make you famous. Makes it easier to be found, but it's not gonna make you famous. So, A, who am I talking to? B, go to where they are. Three, make friends with them. Four, tell them about your podcast. Do not switch three and four. I did this once. I remember, this is before Facebook, so it's back in the day. And I found a forum of ex-radio DJs. And I swear I heard like angel voices like, oh, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is my target audience, this is great. And I walked in and said, hey, I'm Dave Jackson from the School of Podcasting. I'm sure you want to get back on the air, follow me, I'm going to show you how to podcast. And within 20 minutes, I was banned from the group. Why? I didn't make friends before I told them about my show. And I looked like a spamming idiot. So I have to go to where your audience is, make friends with them, then tell them about your show. Or, better yet, go to where they are and just listen to what they're talking about because that's episodes for the future. But that's really what it boils down to. And that's where, in some cases, interviewing other people, hopefully that they will then tell their audience about the fact that they appeared on your show. But it really does boil down to go where your audience is and make friends. And if I, the minute I find that 10,000 download golden switch, I will definitely let you know. But it, it takes a little work. So does that help at all? It's, it's really, you know, and then put it in your email signature, uh, put it on your business cards. Just, you just have to let everybody know, let your friends and family know. Uh, my sister-in-law drives all sorts of traffic to me all the time because she works with teachers and teachers want to have a podcast in their classroom, so. What social media channels do you find garner the most attention? Yes. Uh, whichever one, uh, for example, it depends because if I'm doing a show for uh, teenagers, it might be TikTok, it might be Snapchat. It's not going to be Facebook because it, that's what my parents use. So teenagers are going to use Facebook, they're not going to use Twitter. So it kind of depends on, again, who is my audience and where are they? Yes? So your last slide up there about texting SOP to 31996. Yes. Where do you get that number? That is from, uh, I believe it's called Slick Text. And when you do that, you'll get a message from me that says, hey, Click here to subscribe on Apple, click here to subscribe on uh, Google. Yeah, cost me, uh, that. So, uh, yeah, it cost me I think 25 bucks a month. Okay. But no I talk a lot and it gets me subscribers. So. No limits on... Uh, no, if I wanted to, I could then, I don't do this because I hate when people do it to me, but if I wanted to send like sales messages to people via text, like, hey, there's a big sale on this, I don't, I could do basically email marketing via text, but I really hate that when people do that to me. So I just do it, try to get you to subscribe to my show. And I can see where you are from, things like that, so. Yes? Can you do a, a quick sales pitch on the advantage of a podcast versus a video? 
when you're trying to ah, plan yes. something, when you're well, first of all, do both. Something. Yeah, it, unless it's really unless it's a cooking show where you have to see how something does it. If it's just a talking head show, it takes ten minutes maybe to pull the audio out of that and put it up because you've already got notes about it probably. Uh, but the biggest thing is I can't. Uh, if it is an actual video that I have to watch, I can't watch that and drive to work, but I can if it's a podcast. The same thing I don't understand with people that are bloggers, and you have a message. As a blogger, you want people to read your content, and yet I go, well, why don't you turn that into a podcast? You've got it. You could actually just read that. And they go, eh. I'm like, how do you do a dramatic pause on a blog? You know, how do you have tone of voice with a blog? If you want people to get your message. So it's better than blogging, and you, it's not as, um, I want to say intense, but you don't need my undivided attention to listen to a podcast. But isn't it good to have some type of a video so people can connect with you? Sure. And yeah, I mean, like or a little bit about you? Yeah, absolutely. Yes? Um, That's all right. While you're thinking, all right. Trademark. Trademark. What about? It? Yeah. There's. Um, first of all, I'm not a lawyer, so I have to say that. But as you, the minute you record something and it's in an actual, you kind of have a trademark over it. Like I actually have to go and watch to make sure people don't use the phrase "school of podcasting" because that's mine. You can't have it. Uh, kind of thing. There's, that's where you get into. There's registered trademarks and there's different types, things like that. Don't use music in your podcast. Like you can't play, you know, Celine Dion in your podcast yet. They're working on that in 2020, finally. But um, a lot of people think that they can play 10 seconds or if they're not making money. No. If you don't have the songwriter, if you don't have the song performer and the person that owns the rights, better known as the record label, you don't have permissions from all three, you cannot play music in your podcast, which is really a bummer because I would love to play some. ACDC or something. Yeah, now there's 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 royalty free music. But if it's you know like I can't play Frank Sinatra or you know whoever in search of Garth Brooks, if it's a something you're hearing on the radio, it's a really good chance you can't play that either. Now for the record, it's also illegal to jaywalk and people do that every day. So you will hear podcasts that you know will put music in there and there has been one podcast that was really stupid. It's a really popular poker podcast, and they got a cease and desist. They said, hey, we're going to sue you if you don't quit playing that music, and they ignored it, and they got sued for a lot of money. So, again, don't do that, especially if they give you a cease and desist. Yep. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can say don't do that. Yes. Good. What about editing? Is there is there generally much editing that's needed? Is there a song It's a great question. Because um, there are some people, I, I don't know, I do an hour-long podcast that it took me five hours to edit, to which I always ask, how much planning went into that? Because it's a teeter-totter. More planning, less editing. Less planning, more editing. And so it really depends. There are some people that just want to keep it real, so they just turn on the mic and they have a conversation and off you go. That is not me. And I, the reason that we say this, anybody watch Netflix and at the end it's like, go to next episode? So you click on that. So we're bypassing the end credits. And it also, if you've ever noticed, skips the beginning credits and goes right to the next episode. Point on that is people don't have time for fluff. They don't want it. So if I do an interview and I ask somebody a question, the first thing I listen for is A, did they answer my question? Because you'd be surprised how many times I say to somebody, What's your favorite color? And they go, uh, 345. Okay, they gave me an answer, but they did not answer my question. I will cut that out. That delivers no value to my audience. I had a friend of mine that came on, and I love him to death. He's much more video focused than I am. I said, we're not going to be talking much about video on this because my audience is really into audio. He didn't listen. He talked a bunch about video, and it went right on the editing floor. So I'm a big fan of, um, I picture my audience behind me, and I'm the goalie. And if somebody's, if it's an interview or something like that, it, I just swat it away. Now, I will do that. Some people are like, I don't have time for that. Okay, but then don't get mad when your podcast isn't as growing as much, because you're kind of 
You think like, oh, I, I always love it. They can always fast forward. Okay, they can, but you know, now they're driving, they're walking the dog, and you're making do more when they listen to somebody else's show. They know. So they're good software. Audacity is good, um, Hindenburg, all that stuff. There are also plenty of people. People would say, how do you make money in podcasting? I go, edit an editing shop. There are, everybody's now realizing that some people just want to talk into a microphone. So there are plenty of people that just go here, edit this. Yeah, I use, the, the question is, is there any kind of storyboarding? I use a, a program called Evernote because I'm constantly getting hit with great ideas in the shower or in the car or whatever. So I use my phone a lot. Or if I'm at a, a, an event or something and somebody says something, so that way I can capture it right in my head. Because anytime I go, oh, I'll have to write this down later, later I'm like, what was it talking about? So I put everything I never know is what I use. And then I usually, what I do is I will have my bullet points and I'll actually write them out as a blog post because I want to flesh out the ideas. Then I take that idea, and it sounds weird, I'm going to take it back to bullet points, and I hit record, and I talk to my one friend sitting across the table who was invisible, and then I take that, edit it out, but because I've kind of planned it, there isn't much editing. I, I flesh out the idea, from there I throw some music in it, upload it to Libsyn, copy and paste the player, and hit publish. So. Uh, okay. Kelsey, you still good? Like I said, I will do this one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as long as people want to leave. Oh yeah, if you want to leave, but I'm going to answer these all that. Go ahead. You mentioned that you gather information about where your uh, listeners are coming from. Yeah. Do you, is there any way of gathering emails or no, that's anything? That's the lovely. Uh, for, especially people that listen often. No, but that's where you can come up with. Direct them to us. Yeah, like a lead man. Um, and the reason for that, GD, have you ever heard of GDPR? It's a European thing that basically says they're really. And there's a new thing coming in January from California that basically, and we can all thank Facebook for this, that you can't, you can't, you can't grab that kind of information. Because with podcasting, the only way you're kind of opting in is by saying, I want to listen to this. So if all of a sudden you hit play, and I know your first and last name and where you live, that's a little spooky. So you have to opt in to some sort of email list or something like that to do that. So. Yes? So back to editing, when you teach people Mm -hmm. New podcasters, do you have a, a ratio or formula in terms of a length of the show versus amount of editing time? That they Four to one. one target? Yeah. So if I want to do a 15 minute podcast, it's going to take me at least an hour. And you're like, wait a minute, I just talked into the microphone for 15 minutes. I'm going to take an hour. I have to figure out what I'm going to talk about. Then I say it and hope that uh, I, I uh, don't need a lot of editing. Then I type up a paragraph about it because Google's got to find it. And then I upload it to my media host. Congratulations, your 15 minute podcast just took you an hour. And that's once you really get the hang of it. So that's probably the biggest one. Yes? We're done? No, no. Oh, I just want you have to a question. Self plug because you have a lot of. Oh, self plug. And you have a lot of editing questions. And you guys might not be aware. You're teaching Audacity here at the library. Oh, nice. You're starting in November by me. It is an art to edit. Great. But thank you so much for coming out. I really appreciate it. I will hang around more if you have more questions.